Welcome back to the former cat vlog. This is episode number 76. And for this one, I play poker at Prime Social Club out in Houston. Uh, anytime you play poker in Texas, things tend to get really wild. So I got into some interesting spots. I think you guys are going to enjoy it a lot. Uh, I was out there with my buddy Aaron. He is a poker player as well. We were watching the ALCS between the Astros and the Boston Red Sox. Um, Aaron and I, we met in Las Vegas about six years ago. Uh, playing 2-5, but since then he's flown through the stakes. He's the best and most profitable poker player that I know. Mainly plays 10, 20, 40 and above. So always nice to hang out with him and pick his brain about poker stuff. But uh, before we get into it, I've got a big announcement to make. Andrew and I are doing a meetup game at my hometown casino. It's called Grayton. It's about an hour north of San Francisco. So I'm super excited. That's going to be Saturday, December 15th. We're going to be playing either 2-5 or 3-5, no limit. Uh, I'm gonna have some more information in the description box down below, but if you're in the area, come hang out, have some drinks, and play poker with us. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and get into the episode. After arriving at Prime, we get called for the 1-3 game, which is the biggest one they have running at the time. There's no rake for games in Texas, instead you have to pay to rent the seat. It's about $15 an hour, there's also a new membership fee and a door fee. I pay for those, then I buy in for $1,000, which is the max. In our first interesting hand, we pick up King-10 suited in the hijack, under the gun plus one limps in, the player on my right limps in with the short stack. He's shown in prior hands that he plays a little crazy and he's willing to gamble. The action's on me, I raise to 15. The button calls, the small blind calls, and the under the gun plus one player calls. The limper on my right then shoves for 83 total. The dealer drags in the 15 from everyone, it's 68 more. After playing with this guy for a bit, I'm not overly concerned that I'll have a big hand. The issue is that if I call the 68, everyone behind me may call as well. They don't like to fold in Texas. I 4-bet to isolate the opponent, I make it 165 total. There's no reason that any of the remaining players should have anything strong since none of them 3-bet me and there's no reason for them to think that I'm 4-betting light. They all fold, it's heads up, the board runs out, king 9-9, ace on the turn, jack on the river, I'm somewhat concerned. The player says that he has queen high and he got none of the board, I win it and take down the pot. Next we have ace-queen offsuit on the button, the player under the gun opens to 15. Under the gun plus two calls, I prefer to three bet rather than call so I can win the pot right away. I make it 75, the players fold, we win that one, then we head to the table where my buddy Aaron's at. Here we're dealt pocket nines, under the gun plus two, Aaron straddles from under the gun, I raise to 20. The hijack calls and the cutoff calls as well, the three of us see the flop, it's 7-5-3 with two diamonds, it's a great flop for us, no overcards out there. We need to bet while we're likely ahead so we can protect our hand and deny equity from someone with a hand like two overs. I lead for 30. The hijack shoves for 131 total, so it's 101 more to me. The cutoff folds. I'm not laying this down, I call. The turn is another three. The river is a four, so any six makes a straight, but other than that, not too scary of a run out. The hijack turns over ace seven of clubs. He flopped top top, but that's not good enough. We stack another player. Later on in the straddle hand, we get Cowboys. We're under the gun plus two, under the gun plus one limps in, I raise to 25. The hijack calls, the button calls, Aaron, who straddled from under the gun, is considering whether to call or not, and he has a few questions. Is this going on the vlog? If I stack you, is it going on the vlog? It has to. It has to. <laughs> he calls, and so does the under the gun plus one player. Five of us see the flop. It's ace eight five with two clubs. This is not what we were hoping for. Fortunately, it checks through. The turn is a magic card. It's the king of spades. That's the only card in the deck that gives us the second nuts. The opponents check to me. I've been waiting for an opportunity to make a big hand because people have shown a propensity to be very sticky and pay off light. I bet 55. If anyone has an ace, I should be able to win a nice sized pot. That doesn't seem to be the case though. Everyone folds. A few orbits later, we get pocket tens under the gun and open to 15. 
Four players call with intentions of getting some Bradley dollars. Five of us see the flop. It's 754 rainbow. The big bond checks, it's on me. I want to protect my equity. I bet 45. Three players call. I don't really know what's going on in this hand. The turn is an ace. It's a bad card. But to be fair, there weren't that many that I wanted to see anyway. The big blind checks. After getting three callers on the flop, I'm not going to bet my second pair. I check. The player on my left fires for 130. Bold back to me. I don't really know where I'm at. It doesn't seem likely this player's bluffing the turn with so many people involved when he bet. And he was the first caller on the flop. I don't want to have to call here and face a big river bet as well. Folding seems like the best option. I let it go. Shortly after, we get ace nine suited in the big blind. Under the gun plus one opens to 20. He's an older dude who hates folding. Ordinarily, I would either three bet or fold with ace nine suited. I don't think my opponent will let his hand go if I three bet though, but I'm bored, so I want to play. For those bad reasons, I call. We're heads up, the flop comes queen, queen, 10, rainbow. I check, we get some good news, the player checks back. I get the sense that he's weak, and the turn is the seven of hearts. We've still got almost nothing. I take a stab at it, betting 45. I might take this line, pocket tens or sevens, a hand containing a queen, and straighter flush draws. The player calls the 45, but still seems weak. The river is a complete blank. It's the four of clubs. I mentioned earlier, this guy hates folding. I just can't help myself. I fire again, this time for 115. The player reaches for chips. This could be embarrassing for me. Eventually he calls. He obviously has me beat. I'm not too happy. Either my read was wrong or he soul read me. But as I turn my cards over to show the bluff, I joke and say, Got him. Oh, my guy's coming, coming to get lucky now. I can't lose. There seems to be some confusion here. The player must not be able to see that I've got nothing because he's not tabling his hand after he sees mine. Then I hear my favorite words of the whole night. Okay, I did not expect for that to be a true statement. <laughs> oh, just. I took him straight to Value Town with pot sized bets on the turn and the river with ace high, just like I planned it. Okay, not really. Next, there's a straddle. We have pocket jacks and the hijack. My buddy Aaron opens from under the gun plus one, two to 35. He's opening big from early position, so this kind of sets off some alarm bells. I just flat. The button calls, the small blind calls. Now the big blind shoves for around 180 total. My buddy calls, my hand is under repped. I contemplate four betting, but at best that would result in me isolating the big blind. He's probably not bluffing since I haven't seen him three bet once this session. My buddy could have a very strong hand himself and might have flatted the three bet to entice the player to call or raise behind him. This is a weird spot for me. I'm not getting good enough odds for me to want to call and set mine since I'm confused. I fold and wait for a slightly better situation. The players behind me call, they go four ways to the flop, it comes queen high. Small blind ends up having ace queen. He shoves on the flop, but he gets no callers. The big blind has pocket queens, flops top set, and scoops the pot. Later, we win a decent one, checking our way to showdown with king high after raising preflop and getting three callers. Our stack is at 1565. Keep in mind that we did have to pay for time, the new member fee, door entrance fee, and we had to tip the dealers with money outside of what we bought in for, so really we're only profiting about 465. Still it's a solid night of 1-3. Eric Riley now joins the table. He's a retired basketball player who won a championship with the Houston Rockets and was also the sixth man for the Michigan Fab Five team. He gave me permission to include him in the vlog, just for the record. This dude loves getting involved in hands and I do play one with him. I'm dealt pocket nines in the hijack. My friend opens a 20 from under the gun plus one. I call, Eric calls on the button, the small blind three bets to 80. Aaron calls, I call, then Eric calls. Four of us see the flop, it's 863 rainbow. The small blind seemed uncomfortable, then as soon as the flop came out, he suddenly got quiet and he jams. Aaron folds, I then see the small blind show his hand to one of his buddies who happened to be walking by the table to sweat. I don't think he's bluffing, I fold my over pair. Eric ends up calling. Eric has 8-7 offsuit and loses to the small blinds pocket 10s. We narrowly escape in another tough situation. That's it for us. After almost seven and a half hours of play, we call it a night, booking a decent win.
cashed out for $14.45 on the night. Uh, played for seven hours. I had to pay the door fee, uh, the new member fee. I had to pay time and I had to tip dealers. You do all that stuff in cash. So the buy-in ended up being an extra $145. I just, I just lumped that in with the thousand that I bought in for. Uh, so I netted 300 on the night, which is great. Um, going back to the hotel now and tomorrow we are going to the Astros game. We actually went to all three Astros games. It was the first time I'd ever seen live playoff baseball, and it was a blast. I'm a huge Giants fan myself, so really didn't care who won, but it would have been cool to see Houston win at least one home game. Instead, Boston ended up winning every game while we were out there before going on to the World Series and winning that. Didn't have much time on this trip to play poker, other than what you saw already, but I did manage to squeeze in a quick one-hour session before one of the baseball games. Wasn't planning to film any more hands for the vlog. I did get in a huge pot that I filmed for Instagram though. I thought it'd be fun to add it in here too. I'm back in the 1-3 game. I pick up pocket nines on the button. The under the gun player opens to 15. He's been opening a wide range from every position. Under the gun plus one calls, it folds to me. Calling's fine, but I mix it up and I go for the three bet to 75. If I get jammed on by the under the gun player, I plan to call since it wouldn't be too much more for me. Both players call my bet, we go three ways of the flop, and it comes queen nine six with two clubs, we got middle set and a three bet pot, we're in position and we're against multiple opponents, it's a dream situation. Both players check to me, I bet 105. The under the gun player jams for about 240 total, the under the gun plus one player then re-jams for more, I make the call. The turn is the seven of spades, the good card, the river is the king of spades, some straights get there, but the flush draw misses. Neither opponent is too happy to see my set of nines. We win a three-way all-in. That's the biggest pot I've played at Prime. Bring it on, buddy. Bring it on. I ended up making 665 on the second and final session of the trip. Altogether, I won just under 1,000, playing about eight and a half hours of poker in Houston. The trip cost more than that, but I had a great time, and at least I was able to make some money while I was out there. That's it for this one guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps out the channel a ton. Also, if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section down below and I'm happy to get back to you. Uh, I want to give a big apology to the Houston Astros fans. Every game I went to, you guys lost, so sorry about that. Uh, but you're welcome to the Boston Red Sox fans. Uh, last thing is we have the meetup game Saturday, December 15th at Grayton Casino. That's in Roner Park, which is just outside of San Francisco. Um, I'll have information regarding that in the description box below. But uh, if you're in the area, then come hang out with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. My friends and family are going to be there, so it should be extra special for me. Hope you're all doing well. Good luck at the tables, and I'll see you next time.